reflection, refraction, refraction. Reflection changes the direction of a wave as it bounces off an object. As you can see in the uh, example there, you got incident ray and you got a reflected ray. So the original ray comes in, hits the barrier, and goes a different direction. Now, also, refraction means creates the illusion of a bending wave as it changes speed <coughs> while passing from one medium to another, like you see in a pond. So as the water goes from the shallow or the top layers of water into the deeper water, it will bend and you won't see the fish where the fish really are. They'll actually be somewhere else, but you'll see them differently than where they really are because of this bending of light. Light doesn't literally bend, but it's an illusion created by your eye that shows the bending because it's changing in a direct line, it is changing speeds, and your eye sees that change as a bending light. Now, it's kind of one of the tricks your mind plays. Diffraction is even more important. Diffraction changes the direction of a wave as it passes through an opening or around an object in its path. And you can see the different ways all of this happens. And you can see primary changes, and you can also see secondary changes. So you can see primary wave changes, and you can see secondary wave changes. Especially in the top left. Now, in the top left corner, you see the waves as they come around the back side of the object, they bend towards each other. Also in the, in the bottom left hand corner. And also what you can see is a secondary wave transformation is concentric circles moving outward kind of very subtle, kind of hard to see. But you can see concentric circles going around outward through the waves even though the waves are passing in one direction. So all these kind of things are going on. Now, what you see in all of these slides are the tricks that our mind plays on us when we look outward from our bubble that we're in into outer space. From these simple examples, we can see that as we look outward, the same effects occur that we see here on Earth. We see in outer space. So if we're looking at it through a pond here on Earth, it's no difference than looking outward from our bubble into the vast pond that exists in outer space. Here, uh, if the light in the universe was created by the spoken word of God, and it was created in some type of water, then we should see the same effects in the universe, and we do. We call them relativistic effects, predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity as gravity lensing, gravity bending. But basically all we see right here is their simple explanation. They're nothing more than what we observe right here on Earth. If the, if the universe is filled with waters. <clears throat> and this is testable. Okay, so, people want to make sure that creation theory is a testable theory. You can test this. Basically, all you have to do is create a barrier, which you call a firmament, in a vacuum, pump into the vacuum different types of gas mediums or fluid mediums. You have one over cold, one over hot. You pass the laser through the mediums, and what you will see is exactly what we showed up there. A plenum. Uh, before I go on, Permanence, we will call it just a second, double layers. And in plasma physics, if the universe is this giant ball of plasma, and we can see it now outward, as the cosmic microwave background I've explained before, then these double layers will become important in a second, and I'll explain what they are. But it's a very important concept in plasma physics. Okay? Now, the plenum. The plenum is the space in construction, is the space between the real ceiling and the drop ceiling, which is often used as an air duct for heating and air conditioning. <coughs> Excuse me. It is also filled with electrical, telephone, and network wires. So, above us, you see a ceiling, but it's not the true ceiling. All right? Above that ceiling is this space called the plenum. It's just a space. There's all kinds of cables in that that's linking up all those light switches and everything, and if they need to repair anything, they can crawl through that and fix those lights. Above that is the true ceiling of the building, or the very outward part of the building. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Now, this double layer equals 
a plenum in outer space. Now this is a little way here in this experiment, but these exist as firmament in outer space. And I'll get to that in a second. I'll get more on that in a second, but that will go to right now. Now, attenuation. This is another very important concept. Attenuation means as sound and light travels through a medium, its intensity diminishes with distance. This weakening occurs from the exact same effects that we just described earlier in water. Reflection, refraction, diffraction. It occurs from scattering and absorption. Scattering equals reflection, refraction, diffraction. And absorption equals conversion. So as light travels, or sound travels, through these different mediums, some of the energy that it began with is going to be lost to the medium. And as it farther and farther travels, as you can see in the eggs in the picture, the more dark it becomes or the less energetic it becomes. Impedance. All right, next sentence. If sound is normally impinging from a medium with acoustical impedance from the C1, that's just any random number of acoustical impedance. Okay, that may be hard to understand. But anyway, on a medium with acoustical impedance C2, by the difference in impedance, only a fraction of the sound will penetrate in the second medium. Usually the major part of the sound is reflected. Okay, so what it's saying is that as sound travels into a new medium, most of the energy of that sound wave is going to be reflected back through the first medium, and only some of it will travel into the second medium. Does that make sense? All right, this is easy to explain. Transmission versus reflection. The fraction of transmitted sound, or the part of the sound that enters the second medium of sound energy is a function of both mediums, C1 and C2, and is noted by the coefficient T. All right, it looks very complicated, but it's very simple. Basically, T equals the amount that is transmitted from this first medium into the second medium. Transmission. If there's no, if T equals zero, then that means that none of this wave entered the second medium and all of it was reflecting backwards. So there was no transmission. If there was no transmission of sound from me to you, you would not hear my voice, even though I'm blah, 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 blah. Now, if T equals 1, T is, that means it's a full transmission. So right now you're getting not quite T equals 1 or else I'd be extremely loud. But the farther you sit back in the back, because the sound is being absorbed by materials, only some of it's getting all the way back there. So they hear softer tones than you hear right here. Does that make sense there? That's transmission. All right. So value zero, one. Now. Uh, okay, if T equals 1 or Z1 equals Z2, then there is no reflection. Perfect transmission, and the object will appear invisible. And you will not hear any sound, even if it is right beside you. If T equals 0, then you have 0 transmission and 100% reflection. The only way you know something is there is if it reflects light or sound. You will not see it if it does not reflect any light or sound. As a matter of fact, if this went 100% into this medium, you would not see this anymore. It would be invisible to you. This medium would be invisible to you. You would only see this medium. Why would you not see this medium? Because there has to be a reflection for you to know that this double layer is there, or to know that any of these medium past this one is there. If it's not reflecting sound or light, you will never see anything past this that's an important concept to understand when thinking about looking out into outer space. Which is why we do not see all these firmament in outer space. Which is why we call some, all this stuff dark matter. Matter we know is out there, but we can't see it. It can't be observed, it can't be detected. They can only hypothesize or theorize it's out there, or basically conjecture that it's out there. And this is why. Because this phenomenon literally exists.